Hello all, Scott Grove, Dr. Groovy here of GroovyMusicLessons.com with a very special guitar to show you today. I just picked this one up out in Las Vegas. Been waiting a few days to try to go get this thing, but the UPS man kept stopping me by dropping off other guitars. Anyway, it was a very exciting day. I got to meet an exceptional person and his family, and holy cow. Yeah, we're going to do some working together for sure. And I'm very excited about that. Uh, the most talented bunch of people you would ever meet and just the coolest family. Um, amazing. Uh, the guitar today, and I'm going to talk about them in a minute because I always talk about the story behind the guitars too. The guitar we're talking about today is from Brian Eastwood. Uh, very well known uh, luthier out over in the UK, out in parts unknown. And um, I'll tell you how this guitar particular one came to be, but Brian Eastwood makes guitars that seem virtually impossible. Okay, what do I mean? I mean they just don't look like they should be able to play, let alone to be a very, very serious instrument. Uh, the, Brian's uh, most famous guitar probably is what's called the Distorto Caster. Okay, uh, this young man that I got him off of today, I'll call him young because he's only a couple years older than I am. I'll call him Joey because his name's Joey and he's got like that New York accent. I'm not going to tell you a whole bunch more about the family because uh, if they're going to be quite famous and have already been on some reality TV shows and stuff and I just don't want to give too much away. The daughter is currently starring in a major film with big time actors and so forth and sings like nobody's business. She's a country singer that is going to blow away Carrie Underwood in no problem. In five years, this gal is just going to be on the top of the charts big time. So um, they actually sent me some demos uh, home with me today to do some picking on and some steel guitar stuff and so forth. And I'm going to be proud to be a part of anything that they allow me to be a part of. It's just that cool. The girl is 16. She is gorgeous and sings like a flippin' bird out Carrie Underwood's Carrie Underwood. She just smokes her and she's the one who's doing the acting jobs too. Uh, the son who I met was a bass player today and we all jammed together and everything. Just great looking kid. He could be the the cute one, you know, of course, like in the Beatles, you know, like Paul McCartney was or in any boy band or whatever, but just a real close family. Eight year old drummer and so forth, but just beyond talented for their age, these are just beyond talented people. And Dad, Joey, he um, played with all the big guys, you know, all the rock guys, just like I did with all the country dudes. So we're uh, meshing very well. And it, was, it was a cool experience. We're only there for an hour and a half. I could have stayed there for a couple months and we would have never run out of things to talk about. So anyway, this particular guitar, I'll show it to you first. I told you I was bringing home another paint guitar. This is it. This is number one, serial number one of one. Okay. Um, this one's actually called the Bender Bent Marvel One. Okay, get ready for this. And this one has been played and played and played, and it's appeared in uh, five different, you know, music videos, and it's been put out on the road. And there was a very specific reason it was made. But no, this is not a closet queen. This guitar has seen some action and does some serious damage. Okay, I'm going to have to um, show you this. Okay, here's the headstock. No, my camera's not messed up. Okay. Okay, so it's the Bender. Not Fender. The Bender. Bent Marvel 1. Check out the headstock. How groovy, huh? Yep, I'm going to reveal it little by little. That's the back of the headstock. Amazing neck on this thing. Okay. Where does it go from here? <laughs> you have no idea, folks. Okay, here it comes. There it is. There's some pink. Okay. Uh, it's pink and partly blue. See the inlays? They're blue. They're sometimes in the middle of the neck, sometimes they're not. Okay, what, what, what's happening to the neck here? 
look at the string spacing. What's going on? Why is the low E string not even on the fingerboard? That don't make any sense, does it? It does. <laughs> here it comes. I'll quit messing with you. I have to stand back here because the body is that big. Yes. Here it comes. There you go, kids. The Bent Marvel. Yes, this is a truly a very serious guitar. <laughs> Check out the back. There's your plate. Let me get it so you can read it. The Bent Marvel, and then, you know, your zero one, blah, blah, blah. So, quite the machine. Strat style pickup. Check out the double pit guard here, an extra one just for this horn. Groovy. The mother of toilet seat pit guard. You have blue dots, blue pickup covers, blue knobs, and so forth. The guitar is done in bubblegum pink. No, not regular bubblegum. We're talking the real bubblegum, like Bazooka Joe, for the people who are my age, you know, being around 50. If you remember the old Bazooka Joe bubblegum and cartoon comics that came with them, that's the color this was supposed to be. Now, this guitar came to be because Joe, Joey, had a TV series. It was an animated series, and where the people would, you know, the animated characters in a band would actually pretty much semi come to life you know, to come off and do gigs and play, but the instruments needed to be out there and so forth. And Joy wanted this particular one to be bubblegum pink and be in a matte finish, not a gloss finish like he'd already chewed it. He wanted it to just look like, you know, somebody pressed out a piece of that Bazooka Joe bubblegum, pressed it out flat, and then just started yanking at it from all sides, and he wanted a guitar that looked like that. So he found out you know, through the channels, that Brian um, Eastwood was the one to go see about this stuff. So he contacted Brian, and Brian invited him all the way to the UK to go check this stuff out. So he went, and there was no easy way to get to where Brian has his shop in his place. So someone offered to take them through the woods and battle the Aborigines and the lions and the dragons and get out to finally where it was and um, they opened up the case and Joey was told Brian, it's like, man, I, I love you. <laughs> it's like, you know, this is the guitar that, I mean, on film crosses over between animated and then that semi-real thing and still looks like it's in a cartoon, okay, and actually bubblegum pink, okay, so no clear coats, anything like that, because it's bubblegum doesn't have clear coats. <laughs> so, what did it have to come in? Like I said, this thing has been around the world in a flight case ugh, the size of something you could bury Elvis in. I mean, this is ugh, a true <laughs> road dog guitar. So, yes, it has seen the world and uh, is always a big huge conversation starter to say the least and um, man it's just an amazing guitar and it plays and sounds phenomenally okay so again it's just a very multi-talented family I got to meet today they want to work with me on some guitar projects some recordings some live gigs and we all just hit it off really well so it was just a great deal it's, you know finally a Craigslist uh, thing that went right and we all just clicked and I got a great David Allen Coe story from it too that I <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed though so Joey I, lo I loved the David Allen Coe story it was beautiful so I'm gonna plug this puppy in we're just gonna check her out and uh, you can laugh all you want but I have honestly been after I have seen this guitar on Brian's website just go look up again Brian Eastwood you know, over in the UK, just Google it. Check out the Distorto caster. Check out all the other models that are there. This guitar is on there. 
and it talks about Sir Joey. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can find a strap that can hold this puppy up. Okay, wait till you see this puppy strapped on. Okay, what we actually have over here is it originally came with a um, da -da -da. okay, like a veritone switch here instead of the second tone knob. So you actually have a master volume, master tone, and this one here is just locked up and dead because there used to be a, you know, like a five, six way veritone switch there, which was actually um, robbing it of its, you know, tonal abilities. So can't have that. So you just dummy it up and now it's just a pot that's frozen up with a knob on there just to take place of the hole that was left by the extracted uh, veritone. Okay, so let's get down here where you can actually see this marvel, the bent marvel. Okay, can you get it all in frame? <laughs> okay, now first of all, let's discuss this. So everything's supposed to look like this. Um, the distorto caster, this top horn here actually bends out. Yeah, it actually goes this way. It's like real 3D looking, comes out at you. He had what was called the collision base. Because he ordered all three guitars when he was there. He got there, he said, like, well, give me the Distorto Caster too, which comes out like this, and it's a little bit different shape than this, but still looks like it's been melted. So the, the Distorto Caster is a lot more melted looking, whereas this one actually looks like somebody just took gum and stretched it. And then the Collision Bass, which has the p bass pickups in it, um, looks a lot like the Distorto Caster, where it's actually, you know, one horn goes this way, and one kind of goes back this way, and the case has to be like that deep to put it in. But, okay, the people who are wondering about this whole low E string not being on the neck here, it's that way on all their guitars. And what's the problem with that? Nothing's the problem with that. Um, I personally, and you can play all the way up here to the 17th fret on the low E string before it leaves the neck. Um, some of you shred monsters may play way up here on your low E string. I never do, so that's why it was definitely a contender to take home with me. So it plays perfectly fine. Then when I play the high notes, I play up here. I've never played a low note way up here. It's just not in my style. And you'll see all the extra room here on the fretboard. That's the high E right there. But you've got all this extra stuff for looks just like everything else here is for looks it looks impossible to play which is the whole idea behind Brian Eastwood's guitars they're supposed to look impossible okay is it heavy no it's it feels like a um, about a nine pound guitar is what it feels like it's not it's not less Paul heavy it's almost there but not quite so it's right between a Strat and a Les Paul, right in that nine pound range. Okay, let's plug it in. Today I'm gonna to go through, I think for the first time, uh, my Johnson, down here you can see it on, Millennium 250 head. So it's a 250 watt head. Of course, again, it's like the, uh, all my other Johnson Millenniums, it's got the 212AX7 tubes in it and so forth, and 250 watts of power. All the effects you hear are built into the amp. There's no external effects except for my boss compressor, and I do have a Morley Wah over here. It's got a Wah built in the amp too, but um, I like this particular Morley. Okay, and then we're going through a Johnson 212 cabinet with two vintage 30 Celestians in it. So it's a closed back cabinet compared to the open back on all my other Johnson rigs. Okay, so here's the guitar in the two position, uh, volume, tone, wide open. <laughs> Just like the normal P 
pickups, you notice the strap pickup here is tilted like it would be in the bridge. And the bridge pickup is tilted the opposite way of what a normal fender strap one would be. But they sound great that way. <laughs> Probably maybe even 11 gauge strings on here currently. So. It's just such a cool act. Um, let's check it out. Okay, let's go to the bridge. Pick up. to sit down and play. I mean, it's so comfortable. Your knee fits right there. Your arm goes right there. I mean, it's just comfy. It's all get out to play. People always wondered that about my reverse V, which was 20 times more comfortable to play sitting down than a normal V. Okay, position two. <laughs> distortion. even though you have room for like two more strings there. <laughs> This is it, and I could not be more proud. I am still going to get the Distorto Caster as well. Uh, I found one in the UK, and I'm going to have it sent over so I can have a pair of these things again. This is the Bent Marvel. 
the distorto caster is the one that kind of caught on. Um, so you can see those every now and then. Again, there's five videos out there with this puppy uh, being the star of the videos too, and music videos. So. Cool stuff. Let's go to the uh, boner tone. That's right, the soldano in the neck position like everybody always enjoys. Um, I love this too. That's why I created the sound. <laughs> Once again, the Brian Eastwood uh, Bender Bent Marvel 1. This is a one-off guitar, one of one, and again, I couldn't be more proud to have it. And I actually found it on Reverb.com, and it happened to just be over in Las Vegas instead of some other country for a change. So I just lucked out, and I met some great people that I know I'm going to have a everlasting relationship with because um, it's just they're just awesome awesome folks that I got this from I'll just leave it at that I'll leave their personal lives out of this and not give you any other names or information or what the films are called or anything until later or what the music sounds like because it's not mine to share with you um, but if and when I get to go ahead, I will. <laughs> but until then, no, I respect people's privacy. So, what a cool guitar. There's the location of the jack. You got your strap locks there. Strap lock there. In no way is anything uncomfortable about this whatsoever. And me being such a fan of paint guitars, it had to be here. <laughs> okay, so once again, as I do my own camera work. I am the groovy one. That's right, Dr. Groovy. Again, from GroovyMusicLessons.com. Don't forget to go get all your new uh, groovy stuff from the uh, Groovy Gift Shop. And you'll never find anything as groovy as this. Okay, unless you go hunting for one. Then again, the best you can hope for is a Distorto Caster, which is so cool. You just have to look them up. Please do it. Google it. You won't... Check out the one in leopard print. <laughs> it's great. I mean, it's cool stuff. And you talk about a conversation starter. Man, this one will do it. I got to hear some of the stories already. And I can already envision the ones I'll get because uh, me being always wireless and being on top of the tables and playing and stuff and whipping this puppy out. Um, hey, I will take this to a gig anytime and play it for the whole gig. <laughs> Not just pull it out and shock him for one song. No, this is a very serious guitar. It really is. And I can honestly see myself playing entire gigs over and over and over and over again. And letting it lead the life it deserves as a player guitar. Because it is that. And I'm lucky. I'm happy. <laughs> okay. So you guys be groovy. Don't forget to check out the website. 
GroovyMusicLessons.com for all the free lessons, all the paid lessons, all the uh, merchandise you could ever want, um, all kinds of guitar reviews, hundreds and hundreds of guitar reviews that I've done, and just common sense stuff that is common sense to me, but is way over most of your heads um, because you've been told the wrong things about guitars for so many years and I straighten those out for you so everything's put together really nicely there where you can actually find stuff easy on the website a lot easier than on the uh, YouTube thing especially since it's been Google Plus uh, what a horrible thing that is huh kids okay so once again be groovy I'm gonna hang out and just party with my uh, new pink partner here <laughs> okay so I hope you uh, some of you out there actually enjoy this as much as I do because I am flat out loving this thing. The fact that it doesn't just look like a strat, for God's sake, you know, everything gets old. But yeah, this is going to be an iconic guitar for sure. And again, it's been seen a few times, whether you remember seeing it or not. You can look it up. It's out there. Okay. And again, it will be on um, Brian's website. Okay, so check it out and check out the man who designed all these things and all the other stuff. He even did tellies this way. He did acoustic guitars all bent like this. So everything looks bent or uh, burnt or melted. Everything's just kind of based on that. They're all meant to look impossible to play, but then once you play them, there's no denying the super quality and the warped mind the little guy must have you know so cool stuff and thanks again Joey to you your family and um, how hospitable you were and look forward to working with you in any capacity in the future okay until next time be groovy take care bye bye